tech entrepreneurship in Nigeria, why do we have less women in tech roles? We've seen the rise of tech entrepreneurship in Nigeria since the advent of the popular e-commerce giant that have opened so many opportunities and set a lot of eyes in the Nigerian tech sector. We've had the ride alien startups come up and we see how very quickly they were embraced. We also have um, the mobile money and the payment startups that were just recently bought over by a bigger company abroad for over $200 million, which again has exposed people to the massive opportunities of tech businesses in Nigeria. We have tech companies sponsoring some of Africa's biggest reality shows. But out of all these great startups I've just mentioned, one should wonder how many were or are led by women. Hmm. Well, my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Today there's also <laughs> science. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to be quite honest with you, the question, I mean, well, that's a valid question. Why are there less women in tech? Mm -hmm. But again, why are there less women everywhere? If you mm -hmm. actually think about it. Mm -hmm. Apart from maybe the Ministry of Women Affairs, you know, and maybe... If, Fashion, fashion or beauty, in which case mm -hmm. a lot of men, a lot of men have even, you know, sort of taken, mm -hmm. there are less women, you know, seems like women are just, you know, marginalized everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I personally feel that one of the challenges is early education mm -hmm. and early orientation. Yeah. I feel like our educational system is sort of, mm -hmm. you know, tilted in a certain way that doesn't allow the girl child mm -hmm. to be able to do anything that the, you know, boy child can do. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole conversation that we can get on. Mm -hmm. You see, um, the things where, you know, I have two daughters, I have two girls, and the things where they try to do and they expect me to say, oh, you maybe can't do because you're a boy. No, you can absolutely do it. You can do it better than him. Go, I mean, go for it. Mm -hmm. I think that that mm -hmm. early education, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, from parents, from teachers, from, like you say, it takes a whole mm -hmm. village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. I think everybody needs to start to encourage the girl child because that's where it starts, mm -hmm. you know, so that they can actually go. For, I mean, you see a, a, a girl that wants to read engineering, like, why? Why not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, there's so many things that you, that sort of been labeled as a, a man's world mm -hmm. or a man's, mm -hmm. uh, man's sector, a men's yeah. sector, you know? But yeah. of course not. So I think, you know, every, every, every of those sectors have to be challenged. Yeah, I, you I, know? Agree, I agree with yeah. you. We are totally, yeah, please. Don't like what you want the, to say something. No, I'm, I'm leaving it open okay, for you. Okay, so, uh, to so talk. I, 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 I think um, I, I agree with you. Um, you said it, it takes it takes the whole community or the whole village to raise a child. And for me, I, I want to look at it. I mean, from a business perspective, to say that um, so you have you have two girls and you have a boy, or you have three girls and two boys, and you give all the attention to the boys. That's two over five economic economic potential. So mm -hmm. you, when you look at it, we are losing more money by not empowering them to live out their dreams, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to rewrite the narrative or rather create a new narrative. And the media um, industry will do, uh, go a long way to you know, pass on, circulate this narrative. One of the narratives I feel we need to um, drive a, lo a lot more is to say to the girl child that it is, it is what it is, mm -hmm. right? The world is cruel to every gender. It's not, so it, there's this thing that has been made, you know, that's where they came up with the whole glass ceiling, copper mm. glass ceiling. Yeah. No, 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 the ceiling is everywhere. Mm. That ceiling is affect, affecting the guy. But when the guy comes back home and says there's a ceiling, the father says, come on, go, go there, go break it. Yeah. That same thing should be told to the girl child. Go break that ceiling. Come on, go and read, do it again. Do that, that exam again. If we need to go and meet the person that is, that is bullying you, you we, we go and meet the person. So it has to be a deliberate, um, um, mm -hmm. in, a, intentional, intentional um, from parents to say, you know, what do you tell the child? The girl mm -hmm. child, when she comes back to say, I was bullied, I was done this, just tell the girl child. She doesn't have to lose her, um, her femininity or whatever it is because she wants to fight for her right. She can still keep it and still get through and do whatever she wants to do. She wants to fly, go ahead and fly. Nobody says you can't. Mm -hmm. And so the parents should encourage, the schools should encourage, but most importantly, the media should help drive this message because we are losing a lot, either as families, as societies, and as a nation, mm -hmm. for that thing we are, we are not harnessing. Uh, totally, totally agree. However, 
we're still just talking about the young ones. Presently, current, what is, what is happening, right? Generally in the workplace, people aren't hired if they're a certain age or if they're married or because they're thinking about the time they're going to be <laughs> pregnant. How much? Oh, that means I'll hire her. Next thing, she's going to have a baby. It's a problem. It's go, it's, so there also has to be a change in mindset of a working environment. What does it mean to work? And I don't feel that the decision to raise a family and still have a, a, some kind of career are mutually exclusive. Mm. However, things do have to give. So it's also how do we create a culture to empower women to enter this space? And technology is a great space for women to yeah. enter. You know, what I'm working on, I, it was someone that told me that I'm a tech entrepreneur. I, I was like, what do you mean I'm a tech entrepreneur? Yeah, I'm terrible. I'm a yeah. Luddite. They're like, but what you're doing is technology. Yeah. And I didn't know that. So it's also switching our own mindset to understand that we want to, you know, women create businesses and enter businesses to fulfill a need. Mm. It's not necessarily thinking the first step is like, I'm going to make money. Mm. Or it's about money. The fact is you're doing it because you've seen a need. Mm -hmm. And women are, 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 are very reliable. They're dependable. Mm -hmm. And so how do we get them, welcome them into this space? Mm -hmm. You know, we don't like to talk about finances. We mm -hmm. don't like to really, you know, um, open up about those. It's not because of anything to hide. It's just we've not been taught that. Mm -hmm. And it's important entering, entering this space that we speak up mm -hmm. and we demand the space at the table. So that means, yes, being able to pitch and present to people who have the capital, mm -hmm. but also to see people who look like us who are having the capital, who yeah. are on the boards, who are giving this funding as well. Mm -hmm. And that will help boost the technology environment and get women into the workplace. Because it's true, when women are included, mm -hmm. it is better all round for the society. Yeah. So it's very interesting what you just spoke about. So I'm going to take two points mm -hmm. from what you just spoke about. The first being the orientation. Mm -hmm. So I've met a lot of women and then when I told them what I do, and they're like, oh, you know, that? did you study computer science in school? Do you know how to code? And it's like, Mm, it's like what they are getting is that tech is all about coding, writing code, going to school to study computer science. But no, I study accounting. I do not know how to write, write one single code. And I'm still in the tech um, industry. So first of all, is the orientation. You do not need to know all this. This. And so I think the jargons, the tech jargons that we push around in this part of the world is, is what is, one, discouraging the um, girl child thinking, oh, it's too much. I, I don't want to do that. Um, I don't want to study computer science. I don't want to learn how to code. So I think, one, is the orientation. We all need to start reorientating the girl child that um, technology is not what like, it's peddled to be. Then two is about something has got to give. So I've been to accelerator programs <laughs> and the, um, my male counterparts, like when I told them my ambition, like what I want to do in this tech space, I want to be known in this tech space. I want to carve a space for myself, a name for myself. And they tell me if there's something has got to give, something's going to suffer. And, that, and that's your relationship. You probably won't find a man that will marry you because you are very ambition on this thing that you want to do, uh, ambitious on this thing that you want to do. So you, your relationship might suffer. But you are doing the same thing I'm doing. You're a man, but nothing is given at your own end. You're not saying wife will not find you. Or you're, like, you're entering saucy but, territory here. I, I am. You're I, saucy. This I is a whole am, topic. That, I am ah, going to. If I could get my teeth into this topic. Will, like, no, like you what do you that, mean yeah. something's got, is, uh, something has got to give? Like, that thing doesn't make it. Because you're doing the same thing. So it's okay that you want to take over the tech industry in Nigeria and whatever. And there's still a woman, because you're a man. So you feel a younger girl or this thing. You can get married at any time. But me, my time is going at 36. Who wants to marry me with all my tech distance? So I've, I've, I don't know. I think there's still, still this biasness. Absolutely. I won't say feminism. And I think biases. that one of the biggest biases is, is, the, is the emotion. They feel women are too emotional. But I always say that, you know, that's the strength more than it's a weakness. Unfortunately, a lot of women haven't even realized that, that having emotion, I mean, think about it. Emotional intelligence is big now. Yeah. Everybody's talking about emotional intelligence. So you already have the emotion. Mm -hmm. The right thing is just to learn how to channel it properly. 
when you have a woman in your business, your mm -hmm. business does better. Mm -hmm. Because they understand emotion, they understand mm -hmm. empathy, they understand a lot of things that a lot of men don't understand. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that is, is even, you know, is a weakness. I think it's a strength if it's properly channeled. But the, the whole emotional thing, I feel like we are emotional beings, women, but I feel like the men try to like always point it out like emotional <laughs> and this thing. Like, don't point it out. I know what I, I mean, am. No, you don't need to point it out. It's, it's, we can go on and on on this topic, true. but <laughs> up next is Peter Steritos.